Welcome to Grow Connection Circle. Welcome Ariella, Miriam, Yehudis, Chava, Miriam, CRH. Tell us who you are and Ariella. Yehudis, HP. I think you're coming on from Israel. I think your name is Hannah, right? So I wanted to add a little bonus. So last night, Last night I was watching a video by Hannah Weisberg where she interviews a Chabad woman who lived five minutes from all the action in Kar Aza and everything that happened. And by, by miracles, her Yishuv was saved and they're totally displaced. And so she describes her life. So at the end, she says like a really nice action like a message for Klal Yisrael that I wanted to open up with. Each day on Monday, each week, I choose the tefillah of the week for Mondays. And then Tuesdays, we learn Shari B'Tachayin. Today, actually, I'm going to share the video, the trust video that's related to prayer. Because the question is, should we pray for trust? And I'm going to show you that right after this. But first, when I have, um, so these days, because there's so much going on in the world, every week I ask myself, what's the tefillah that's in the air? <laughs> what's the tefillah that I'm feeling? So I don't really go in order, but I'm still focusing on tefillahs of gratitude, which is Bercha Sashachar. And today I was feeling Hareini Mekabel. I take upon myself to love others, my fellow, just like I love myself. And from this, from this Chabad woman describing her story, you can go back later on today and watch the entire thing. She describes the way people came to help them. And they had to drive down to a lot, to a small place called Timan, and basically like camp out. And so Hannah Weisberg asked her, who came to bring you all the things that you needed? Was it some organization? And she said, no, you know, usually there's these big organizations that take care of different things. She says, I don't even know who it was. All I could tell you, it was Kalal Yisrael. I don't know. Everybody was just pouring their love to each other. And that is what this prayer, Harini Mikabel, is. Welcome, Goldie. Good to see you. So I'm going to, I just want you to take in the message of this tefillah Hareini with these words of, uh, what's the name? Um, her name is Lichi, Michla Lichi. And she said, I saw Hamas terrorists right behind my house, miraculously. She and her husband and five children survived. And her story is so inspiring. You must watch the whole thing, but just look, listen to the end, okay? And it, it felt a um, way to give back. Thank you, Hashem. Yeah, to live in that kind of situation that you, which is so out of your control, but yet you are just accepting it. Can you can you share with us any heartwarming story or message or thought that you'd like to leave us with? Um, I think it's mostly that like I really feel um, before the war the political uh, stuff in Israel were pretty heavy and it it felt um, like not good like like we were in this like big huge family feud that people weren't talking to each other anymore and people were really fighting like in a in a really scary heavy way right. and during this whole war experience everywhere I look mamash everywhere I look. Um, I just see that Hashem is helping us remember we're just brothers and sisters. At the end of the day, we're brothers and sisters. We love each other. We can't not. Like, hmm. we're here for each other. And when we have this achdos, that's when, like, Hashem will be with us. Hmm. And we have it. And it's, it's, this, is, this is what's coming out from all this, is that, like, literally everywhere you look, you just see people helping each other in ways that don't make any sense, like, at all. Um, even in, like, small ways, when, when we go shop. I don't know how my kids are going to come back from this kind of stuff, but, like, when we go shopping or we go out to eat, um, we ask if there's a discount for people from Otefaza, which is where we're from. And mm -hmm. almost every time there's a discount. Um, and so my kids are like, 
I, I told him, I was like, you know, we're going to have to stop doing this eventually. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> um, but there's something like on one, I kind of wanted to like stop asking because I don't feel good about this kind of stuff. Um, on the other hand, it's a really good lesson for my kids that everyone, everyone cares about them. Hmm. And like we have all our like family and friends and like extended family and friends from America. They're always like, what can we do to help? How can we help? And like tons of money has been fundraised and tons of donations have been coming in in ways that like don't make sense. They don't make sense in a regular like natural world. Hmm. It, nothing logically makes sense. And, and we're all just coming together in this like unity, this like oh, dude, that is huge. And Absolutely. I'm like, okay, it's going to be okay. Like it will be complicated. It will be like, a we're going to have to figure out how to, how to move on from this. Right. Um, like the, like the government wants to move us back in two weeks. And I'm like, I'm not sure I'm comfortable bringing my kids. Like I was driving home and I, my drive home was towards this big, huge black cloud of smoke. That was the drive. I was mm -hmm. like, I'm, that's what I'm trying to get to the black mm -hmm. cloud of smoke, mm -hmm. which is Gaza now. Sure. And the whole time there's the ground is shaking from booms and a lot of bombing going on. So it's not necessarily dangerous to live, but like, it's not necessarily comfortable. Sure. Um, sure. But it's also, Radical. I think, yeah, I think a part of it is also like, I think Hashem is kind of like, okay, like what is comfortable? Maybe mm -hmm. we're supposed to be a little uncomfortable now. Mm -hmm. Like we're ready for the Geula. It's coming. Um, and it's going to be good. Wow. Beautiful. Be so this is a woman that saw that saw the terrorists literally behind her house and Hashem protected her. And her emuna just blew me away and her message of achdos for Klal Yisrael. So whenever we recite Hareini Mekabel, it's a good time to reinforce this message to ourselves. So I'm going to share, this is, we start off by sharing the tefillah before we dance today. Welcome Sir Liba, welcome Eva from Beit Shemesh. So happy. And that's one of the one of the reasons I'm so grateful that you're here, Eva, and I hope you can invite more of your friends from Israel, is that one of the messages that she said was stay connected to your brothers and sisters in Israel. Like, don't forget, like, as life moves on, it's easy to go back to, to just your regular routine and really forget what's happening, even within Israel. Just to know that there are others that still need us, that need our prayers, need our unity, and just the fact that we're thinking about them makes a difference. So I just want to thank everyone who's here joining together in unity that we we don't want to forget. And with our prayers, we hold you in our hearts, all of our brothers and sisters in Israel and anyone who needs any type of Nechama, Yeshua, Geula, we are all in it together. And that's very important to remember. And that's why I... I started these grow circles because, you know, it's easy to go back and just kind of block it out. And so I want, I want to thank you all for taking the time to be here in solidarity with our brothers and sisters in Israel and staying connected with women who are even coming on from Israel, Eva. And I also have a video today from Binyamin, of blessed memories, Mother Rachel, and she thanks you all for taking on the Kabbalot that you took on. And she's so, so appreciative that we dive in for and, and we join together. So, um, okay, now I want to share with you the prayer. So one second. Okay, so this is this was a prayer that was very, very dear to the Lubavitcher Rebbe. And he asked that he made like a whole campaign. I think it was actually during one of the wars in Israel, if I can remember correctly. So this is actually my book called Grow Through Prayer. So I wanted I also want to share with you that I do have resources to make prayer more meaningful for women, for students. Um, so this is called Grow Through Prayer. And we bring in art and meditation and the GROW method. So I'm going to move to Harini Makabel right here. Okay. So this is Harini. The Lubavitcher Rebbe started a campaign in 1983 for everyone to say Harini Makabel before tefillah each day. Harini, let's let's say it together. Harini Makabel alai mitzvat ase shel be'ahavta l'reacha kamocha. 
I hereby take upon myself the positive commandment of you shall love your fellow like yourself. And so a gratitude, this is part of the Berchat HaShachar, so I turned it into a gratitude. I'm grateful for the ability to truly love myself and others, the basis of the Torah. I'm grateful for my family and friends and for those who offer their love and friendship. And we are so grateful for everyone in Kla Yisrael for really rising to this occasion and offering more than just love and friendship, but their whole B'chol Merodecha, like everything that they had, giving it to others in need. Hashem says, my beloved children, do I lack anything that I have to ask you for? All I ask is that you love and honor each other. With love and unity, we draw down the flow of blessings. And this is why Harini Makabel is an introduction to our prayers. How can you take upon yourself to nurture your relationships with love and acceptance? Um, and this is actually the request of Rachel, Early, she asked us to say Hareini Mikabel al Atzmi, to take upon yourself a, a mitzvah, a chesed, in memory of her son. And we could continue to do this, not just a one time thing, but continue to reinforce and strengthen whatever we already took on and let her know that we, we continuously have her in our thoughts. So you see this, this picture of Kulana. This is um, a painting by my daughter. And it includes the faces of children and staff in the friendship circle, an organization that meets the needs of, of special needs children. It's international, but this is the New York branch. And they asked my daughter to make a painting that would represent them. And we all have one father. My daughter also made for them a video representing, and this video truly expresses the idea of the oneness of the Jewish people. And when we when we contemplate the idea that we're all brothers and sisters and we have one father, it makes it so much easier to accept each other, even with our faults. Okay, so would you like to see? Okay, so this is um, a little video that I'll share with you. What does it mean? to truly love another person. How can we? We look so different. Our lives are so vast. But there is something deeper in our core. When my brother Yosef Chaim was born with Down syndrome, we held him tight, wrapping our hearts around him into a promise. No matter what challenges we may face, we will love him unconditionally. Just like God does for us when we are created as part of him. We stood at the mountain as one nation with one heart, united by one Torah, one purpose, one Father in Heaven. And when we begin to see this part of God in ourselves, we can see the soul in another. It is only our bodies that separate us. Our differences melt away. This love has carried us for generations. Our hearts intertwined. We hold each other in our pain. Dance together in our joy. Because in our souls, we are a part of a whole. With one source, children of God. Knowing this, how can we not love another? We all have one Father in Heaven. And when we unravel our knots, connect back to our Source, and become truly one unit, we all fit into our Father's loving embrace.
I hope you got to see it. I know it's a little small. Did you all see it? Are you able to see it? Yes. So that video is my malchus. I'll tell you why. Because I did nothing. But it came through. These are the two children. My, my second daughter and my second to oldest. And my youngest, Baruch Hashem, my 11th child, Yosef Chaim, are the ones to bring this message to the world. Now, I did nothing. I just gave birth to both of them. And not only did I give birth to both of them, but on the exact same day, Ches Thomas. I don't know how, but they both have the same birthday. And it's like, it does it. Every ch person comes into this world with a message. And even though Chana Labor is an artist and an amazing human being, and my son, Yosef Chaim, is a five-year-old with Down syndrome, they both bring the same message to us today of what is oneness, what is love, and that what it means to hold each other, to love each other unconditionally. And that was the vow that we made when Yosef Chaim was born. And even though his language is very different than all of ours, um, he's not yet verbal at five years old. Nevertheless, the love that we have for him is on a whole nother level. And I think that's what we're seeing, you know, although our brothers and sisters around the world, we may speak different languages, but what we're seeing here is Hashem is reminding us that we're all brothers and sisters and that we have one father. So let's take that message with us today. I don't know why every time I watch that video, it like my whole body was <laughs> like, I'm like, like, like my hair is standing up. Um, and so it doesn't get old. <laughs> it's like we need this message all the time. And even the way we see our own family members, just to see the soul. And what if we saw them as a soul without all the differences, without all the flaws and truly love them? Thank you, Eva. So that is a message for Harini Mikabel, Alai Mitzvah Taseh. And sometimes we also need to pray for this type of level of love, <laughs> which, which is connected to trust, I would say, because we need to trust in Hashem that he put the people in our lives exactly the way they're meant to be, with their flaws, with their, you know, with the way that they trigger us, that this is Hashem. And we started, Goldie and I started the Betachon Bank. And I think we get most triggered by people. So when something happens that we, instead of taking it out on the person or getting upset, we go, I trust you, Hashem. I trust you. And and Yehudis, Yehudis, who's here on camera, said, it doesn't say, I trust you, Jewish people. It just says, I trust you and Bach is feminine. It's Hashem speaking to every one of us and saying, Jewish women, I trust you. And what if every time that happens, Hashem's like, I trust you, you can deal with this situation. You can handle this child, this, this, whatever it is that's going on, Hashem's saying, I trust you with it. And then we could remember how much Hashem loves us. And this is, this is, I trust in Hashem in my relationships. But how do I get to this trust? So the Baal Shem Tov teaches us, pray for it. So today we have a connection between Bitachon and Tefillah. How do we strengthen our trust? We need to turn to Hashem and say, Hashem, please help me strengthen my trust. And so add that to our Tefillahs. Help us have Bitachon. And don't get mad at yourself when you don't, because actually when you're mad and you realize that Hashem is with you, that's bitachon. So don't add to the, don't add the tension to whatever your emotions are. Just bring Hashem into it and say, right now I feel like I'm in pieces, but Hashem, I'm, I know you, I listen to Hashem saying, I trust you. You're my masterpiece. So here is my video for today. Bitachon number 20, and then we're going to dance. Who's ready to dance with Sarah Schwartz? Welcome, Sarah. We have some new faces here today. Okay, so here is today's video on Pray for Trust. And think about how you're going to pray for trust. Should I pray for trust? Yes, the Baal Shem Tov teaches us to pray for our trust to be strengthened. 
I am grateful for the gift of prayer. I recognize that when we place our trust in other entities, this may cause God to leave us in their hands, says Rabbeinu Bachya. When we pray in oneness with God, we acknowledge our dependence on him to sustain and deliver us. We wish for the benefits of bitachon, tranquility for the souls of Am Yisrael. And I want to thank Sahaba O'Brien for dedicate, dedicating this in memory of Leah Bat Menachem Nachem, her mother. Okay, so now on that, we can take this love that we feel from, from Hashem and bring it into our dancing. So I want to welcome, ah, thank you, Colty. It does, it really squeezes the heart. I want to welcome Sarah Schwartz, who, um, who is one of the first to buy the Grow Trust Planner. And I see that she uses it <laughs> and enjoys it. So I want to thank you for being one of our first to really experiencing it, experience it. By the way, talking about the word experience, I just learned today from one of the videos that was shared, the word for chava comes from the word chavaya, experience. And that a Jewish woman, she knows that the road to Geula is an experience and comes with pain. Redemption comes with pain. It's an experience. And that's the bridge between Amuna and Bitachon. To really understand what Bitachon is, it's an emotional experience. And I, you know, there's emotional intelligence. So I would say Amuna is like intelligence. It's faith. What is bitachon? It's emotional confidence. It's literally, you feel it in your heart and it comes with every kind of emotion because the heart is not just love. Love comes with pain. Love comes with everything. So that means if we can be open to receiving the love, we also have to take the risks of the pain. And this is a Jewish woman. She understands that life is an experience, a chavaya. So I bless you all with only rich, loving, incredible experiences today and this week. And I want to thank Sarah for joining us. And I'll share with you a little bit about Sarah. And tomorrow we're going to dance a little bit more with Karen. I'm going to, we're going to increase the dancing as we approach Hanukkah. So very grateful that Sarah is able to join us today. Sarah is constantly seeking to grow. Sarah Schwartz and uses different mediums to express herself, including art, dance, and writing. She's also a relationship coach and helps women grow from the inside out. She lives in Miami with her husband and five children. And you can follow her at Sarah's Jewish Art on Instagram. Okay, so who's ready to dance? I'm going to be her DJ. And I'm the video this way or should i turn it the other way or does it not matter let's see um no the other way yeah now you're upside down yeah that's not now you're upside down again <laughs> you're sideways i mean <clears throat> okay so hold on i'm gonna so if you want to share anything i'm gonna pull up the music sarah You see me? Yes, we see you amazing. Okay, so if you want to give an intro, I'm pulling up your your playlist. An intro that uh... and feel grounded in our body. That exists in our body. Israel has a right to exist in its land. 
dancing and specific. Like Israel was chosen by God to be a lamb to host Hashem. Our bodies were chosen. Today, as we go through the music. I don't know why you're going in and out, but it's. Get off my AirPods. Is it, is it just the. Awesome. the no, you we hear a few words and then we lose you. We hear a few words, and I don't want to lose any words, not any words that you have to say. <laughs> <laughs> Try to take it off the AirPods. They've been acting up lately a bit. Hold on. Um, okay, how is this? Is this better? Yeah, we hear you. Okay, I'm going to try to ditch the AirPods and see if that helps. Um, should I should I start again of what I was saying? Yes. Okay. Okay, so in short, what I've been learning and what I've been processing lately, as all of our hearts are together towards Eretz Yisrael, right? Hashem created this land to be a home for him, to be a space to host his presence in this world. Hashem wanted a dira betachtonim. That's God's ultimate desire, a dira betachtonim. So he created a land to host him. And now all of our eyes are in, are in Eretz Yisrael and realizing she has to stand in her worth and defend her borders and own her right to exist, right? We all know that. And the same thing is for each one of us. Hashem created each one of us, each one of our bodies as a mini Eretz Yisrael, a place to host Hashem in this world, a place for Hashem's light to shine through, Hashem's light to dwell in the world. That's what Hashem wants. And the more we can get present in our body and feel every, every inch of our emotions and of our skin and of our bones and of our muscles and just feel it all and feel like it's space that Hashem wants to fill every inch. There's no corner where Hashem says, I don't want to be there. Hashem wants to be in every inch of our body. The more we, that's why just dance is so powerful. So as we go through the playlist today, it starts off with some, I would say, sadder songs. Because for me, acknowledging all the emotions, especially the hard ones, is like the entryway into feeling the joy and feeling the trust. Like Nahama was saying, we pray for trust. To me, a huge entryway into trust is first acknowledging that Hashem is okay with all of how I'm feeling. So the first song is um, Broken Hearts from Brielle. And um, it talks about like, feel, and as we dance to it, just n feel in your body and in your mind, anywhere that feels broken or sad or emotional or pain or lonely. And just imagine Hashem coming in there and breathe Hashem into that space. Sounds good? I love it. Sarah, thank you for explaining Bitachan the way the way we the way we share it of it, of it in this circle. And we can add the words like Rabba and Munasacha, Hashem saying, Great is your faith. We say to Hashem, I trust you. I trust you with all these feelings that he gave us. Mm -hmm. We can find him right there. Okay, so here's the go. Here's the music. Who knows pain and all its parts? Who restores all broken hearts? Forms darkness and light, creator of peace and strength. 
sits on the judgment throne Who forgives a quits and don'ts The long rope of mercy Watches oh and knows just who will heal my broken heart I fall apart and I'm longing like an ocean with no shore won't you just tell me who now will embrace me and promise that I will not break down with no shore won't you just tell me who now will embrace me and promise that I will not break down Beautiful. I'm not sure who's dancing with me. I see a few of you, but can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I believe in Hashem. I trust in Hashem. There never is a moment. So beautiful. The only um, instructions that I give when I lead these classes is that there's no instructions. <laughs> that just to just you can close your eyes listen to the music and just sense what your body wants to do your body may want to squeeze into a ball it may want to open up wide it may want to fall down to the floor it may want hard movement soft movements this is just an opportunity for you to get into your body and honor it whatever it wants so you can look to me or others for inspiration but that's all it is. It's inspiration of movement. It's not rules. It's just your body and your time. The next song is about bitachon also, like finding Hashem, realizing Hashem is holding us in the hard moments. So just notice that, feel that, invite him in to all the places. Oh, and when I'm all alone and I'm on my own, I believe and trust in Hashem because I understand that He's holding my hand and every step is perfectly planned He's holding me tight so I'll be alright I believe and trust in Hashem When the pain is so complete and the heartache is so true I surrender God I give Oh, 
song is called Battle Cry by Chaya Kogan. And think about any battle that you're fighting. We are each on battlefront, just like the soldiers are on the battlefront in Gaza. We are on the battlefront in our own life. And any struggle that we have, any trigger that we have was divinely set up for us to face. And just feel that empowerment, that Rabbi Munasecha, that battle cry that we are empowered, we are with Hashem, we are trusted, get through this challenge. And when it says, this is our battle cry, you really shout out loud. Like she, she sings like a, like, a, like a loud sound and express it. Express your strength with your movement, with your body and with your voice. Okay, go for it. One day and a long night. So many thoughts, my heart keeps racing. I'm barely getting sleep in. Most days I feel like I'm losing the control I barely had. It's all too much and so confusing. They say it can get a lot better. It may hurt, but I can make it work. So I'm deciding today. I'm gonna make my life a life worth living I'm gonna fight If God put me on this battlefield He believes that I can win this war If God put me on this battlefield He will catch me where I fall Maybe I'm going battle But I'm not giving up, not taking not going down without a fight This is my battle cry 
crashing down I was completely shattered, felt like I didn't matter I tried to hide much on my real face It's not pretty to be sad and they just wouldn't understand, yeah But now I know a lot better I'm not gonna camouflage myself again With my prayer shield in hand I'm braving my sky
feeling sweaty. Feeling good. I miss it. Okay, next song. Another one from Chaya Kogan. What's the next one? Am Yisrael? Let's go. I think, let's see. Again, feel the joy, feel the strength towards Eretz Yisrael, sending strength to the land, to our people, to our soldiers, sending strength to us, to you, to the parts of you that feel they're fighting. They need strength. They need joy. So just send the joy there. Okay, next, go. Okay, that's Am Yisrael Chai. Let's do it. חזק ומיוחד עם אלוקים שכל הדרך איתנו ויש בנו משהו מיוחד שאהבת חינה מהקיום שלנו וזה ידוע שאנו פלא לעולם איך הוא מדוע העם שלנו עוד קיים כלום אותנו לא ישבור בסוף כולנו הביתה נחזור We're coming home We're coming home We're coming home We're coming, coming, coming home It was given to us personally from God's hand From the mountains to the sea to the hot sand We will take a stand To the wall every day, yeah, we all pray And it really doesn't matter what the world say To generations passed down until this day We are here to stay We're coming home, yeah, yeah We're coming home, we're coming home We're coming, coming, coming Leave me, a, leave me a quick note in the comments of how you're feeling. Love to see. There's two more songs. First one is called Lech Lecha. And Lech Lecha. Go to yourself. La'atzmecha. To your true self. So often we feel we have to wear the labels of I have to. And this is what somebody told me I should be. I have to carry this burden. I have to carry my parents' burden or whatever it is. Or even Hashem's burden, right? It's not a burden. Just imagine shedding. How oh, beautiful. I love all these comments here. Shedding all those layers of identity that cover up who we truly are and feel lech lecha going to your true self. And then we'll go straight into the last song, which is Pada B'Shalom, carrying the energy from Yitzhak Kislev, this redemption of peace. We are redeeming ourselves 
in a peaceful way, in a joyous way, in a wholesome way. And we'll end with that joyous trust that God has in each one of us and we have in him. So beautiful. I love everybody's comments. Okay, let's go for it. Last two songs.
incredible you have so many comments here people are really really enjoying this embodied experience oh, mind God, body soul yeah. and the music really brought out everything that we're feeling and everything that we want to feel <laughs> thank you so so much for this gift that you gave us today my pleasure my pleasure and I really bless I'm looking at your comments thank you I'm so glad and really bless all of us to step into whatever it is that makes us feel most alive. Sometimes I step out of dance because I think of all the things I should be doing, right? But what we should be doing is what makes us feel most alive. Whether it's art or dance or running or hanging out with friends or whatever it is that makes you feel most, I bless all of us because that enables Hashem to flow through us. That energy, that life, that love is Hashem. We're pulling Hashem Shechina more into the world. And we should see, we should feel, we should feel the redemption of the Shechina collectively, and especially in Eretz Yisrael and for all of us. Thank you. Thank you for this honor. Dancing with you was really an honor. Thank you, Sarah. That's beautiful. Where do you live, Sarah? I live in Miami near Mrs. Labor's grand, um, grandchildren and daughter, yes. Grandchildren. Oh, mom. No, 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 no. Okay, I'm getting the wrong labor. <laughs> I was like, we don't have grandchildren. We don't have that big of grandchildren. Okay, got it. 
So I wanted to give everyone the opportunity to connect in the breakout rooms and focus on the, the prayer of this week is Harini Mekabel Alai Mitzvah Taseh Shalva Ahav Talarecha Kamocha. And as Sarah said, do what you love could be connecting to, to your self-love because when you connect to the infinite source of love, then you can give so much more to others. So um, I just wanted to share something that it's interesting that something I love doing is is writing for books, publishing books that will help bring <clears throat> Yiddishkeit to others in a way that's integrated, mind, body, and soul. Sara does it through dance. So I do it through this GROW method, which represents the four parts of davening, gratitude, recognition, oneness, and wishes. So I'm just about to publish a book called The Grow Prayer Planner, which is going to be your prompts for today. And I just want to share, this is the cover. Just got it back from my designer. And it represents the pomegranates. Like we want the fruits. We want to see the fruits of our prayers, which is ultimately the trust that we have in Hashem. And it goes through basically every day. You see, here's the grow method. And then it goes through every day. You take one idea from davening and you bring it down. And then there's even a coloring page and you bring it down with the prompts. So I'm going to take you to today's tefillah, which is, and this is going to be your prompts. So here are some of the, the words, like whoever thought of when I wash Negavasar, I say it's in my uplifting hands today. My bracha draws down blessings. I connect to God with each mitzvah. So with gratitude, I care for my body. That's a shayatzar. I'm grateful to the healer of all. My soul is God's gift. My soul is a spark of God. Shine your inner light. All connected to the tefillahs. The soul is eternal. I count my blessings. I can distinguish between good and bad. I'm grateful for spiritual insight. Hashem sets me free. That's matira surim. God raises me up. I'm a Jew and I'm proud. I'm grateful for God's kindness. Life is a test. Rabbi Sinyungrais used to say that. Um, I'm just going to skip that. I learn Torah and I grow. Hashem chooses me. Torah is a new gift each day. And we see all these quotes in the prayers. Just Berachas HaShachar. I bless others with love. That's Yavarechacha. God protects me from harm. God grants me peace. Mitzvahs give me pleasure. And this is the this is Harini. So Harini Makabel, I take upon myself the mitzvah to love my fellow like myself. Harini is a commitment to being kind today. We see ourselves as interconnected with our community and pledge to love others before seeking our personal needs. We also demonstrate care by giving tzedakah before beginning to pray. So that's a reminder to give charity, give tzedakah. When we provide for others, <clears throat> God will provide for us. It is the act of giving that matters, not just the amount. By accepting the mitzvah of loving others and giving tzedakah, we become vessels to receive God's blessings. And that other could also be yourself. We also have an other inside of ourselves that needs attention, that needs to be brought closer the part of us that was never addressed, and so forth. So I'm grateful. Gratitude, um, here is just a sample. I'm grateful for all the people in my life. I want to say I wanna, I'm grateful for each and every one of you for this beautiful community that we created together. I recognize how I express my love to others. So recognize how, and how others give love to you. So if somebody could put this in the chat, this is what we're going to share. I recognize how it could be how I give love to myself. How am I kind to myself? And because of that, I can be kind to others through that. In oneness with Hashem, so Shema Yisrael is, I give charity before prayer, and you could add your own. How will you increase in your, what will be your Kabbalah, Harini Mekabel? Make it practical. And then what is your wish? What do you wish for someone else? Or what do you wish for yourself? So, I'm going to add, and this is something that is 70 days to really integrate the basic prayers. And then I also have the Grow Trust Planner. But the truth is, you really do need to know how to pray before Bitachon, because Bitachon is post-prayer. It's like when you go out your door. 
then you take the trust, you take the amuna with you. And then in throughout your day, it becomes trust when you live it, when you live with Hashem in through the, the joys and the sorrows, through the ups and the downs of your day. That's really trust. So often people jump to trust and they try to acquire trust and then they're really landing back in Amuna. It's still in the head. And so that's why I, I, I say that the steps of prayer, when you have a, a dialogue with Hashem and you learn how to communicate with him, like he's your best friend, that's when you can then bring that into your day and as you go on your way, okay? So um, I'm going to open up the break rooms. Anybody want to add anything for everyone? So, I tried to write the prompts. I got one in there for you. Thank you. You said a lot of wonderful things. Okay, so basically it's... Second, I'm getting... Okay, so I'm opening the breakout rooms with our Grow Mentors and you choose where you want to go, okay? So room one has Goldie Tenant House. Room two has Devairi. Room three has Ima Labor. And basically, and room five has Sir Liba. I'll go into room four. And facilitators, what you do is just give everyone a chance to express gratitude. Um, is Shangel still here? Oh, Shangel's here, because you, you must have left and come back. So Shangel, you'll be room four. And basically, if you don't know how to put yourself in a room, I'll put you in a room as long as there's room. So we should try to like divide up to four into a room. Four. Uh, right. How do we put ourselves into a room? All rooms. Okay, I'm opening all rooms. Oh, I see. Oh, I got it. Oh, thank you.